Let me now wind up on the following note. We talked about the brain project of Obama. But if we can create a disk with your connectome on it, and you die, your connectome lives on. And so then the question is, did you really die? Well, it depends on how you define you. If you are a biologi biological entity consisting of wetware and a mind, then yes, you have died. You are gone. But if all your memories, your personality, your hopes, dreams, your genome survives, then did you really die? In some sense, no. But that assumes that you are information. And if that's true, then maybe one day we will have a brain net. A brain net. Perhaps within the next decade or two decades, we will have not just digital sent on the internet, we will have emotions. We will have feelings, memories sent on the internet. Teenagers are going to love it. On Facebook, they'll send emotions ricocheting across, the, across Facebook. Memories of their first kiss. Memories of their first date. I mean, it's going to explode. And your kids are going to say, Mom, Dad, you lived in a world where the internet was digital? How could you? How could you live in that world? No feeling, no emotions, no experiences. Well, it's coming, a brain net. And the movies. Why is it the movies and the Oscars always talk about a flat screen with sound? I mean, think about it. Isn't that stupid? Everyone making all this hay about a flat screen and sound? Why not send emotions through the entertainment channels? Why not have full immersion entertainment? That could be the future of entertainment. And Isaac Asimov's favorite short story was... Sending consciousness into outer space. Maybe one day we'll take the connectome. It only has a zeta byte of, of memory. Put it on a laser beam. I calculate how big the laser beam would have to be. And shoot it into outer space at the speed of light. This could be our ultimate destiny. To explore the universe as beings made out of pure energy. All consistent with what is known about the laws of physics and the laws of computer science. And now I'd like to end on one note and then take a few questions. When I was a child, my role model was Albert Einstein. And my favorite Einstein story is this. When Einstein was an old man, he was tired of giving the same talk over and over again. So one day his chauffeur came up to him. And the chauffeur said, Professor, I'm really a part-time actor. I've heard your speech so many times I've memorized it. So why don't we switch places? I will put on a mustache. I will put on a wig, I will be the great Einstein, and you can take a rest to be my chauffeur. Well, Einstein loved the joke, so they switched places. This went along famously until one day, a mathematician in the back asked a very difficult question. And Einstein thought, oh, the game is up. But then the chauffeur said, that question is so elementary that even my chauffeur here can answer it for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great audience.